<coughs> okay, so um, let's talk about what a symbol table is for the purposes of this assignment. So a symbol table is um, a table that associates uh, information uh, with a symbol. So let's suppose that our table would look like this. We would have a symbol naming here and it's just strings and then over here we'll have some other information now that's kind of a, a general description of what a symbol table is so let me uh, narrow that down for the purposes of this assignment in this assignment we're gonna use symbol tables to associate names with numbers uh, so the symbol table would look like this we have a name here and we'll associate that with a number so maybe you have name ABC and that may be associated with number 2 you have name DEF and that will be associated with number 3 uh, the reason we use this type of symbol tables in, in this class in particular is um, is for the LC3 assembler. The LC3 assembler uh, in the LC3 you'll have a bunch of instructions for the program so a, an LC3 assemb assembly program might look like this uh, you'll have a bunch of instructions one on each line and sometimes uh, you will assign um, a number uh, sorry you will assign a label to each well, to, to some of the instructions so for example this instruction could be assigned label 1 or this instruction could be assigned label 2 and what happens is that each instruction in the LC3 uh, gets stored in its own address in memory um, so basically each label each label has its own address so this could be address uh, 2 and this could be address 4 and what we're going to do is the um, labels are going to be the names in our symbol table All right, so it would look more like this we're going to have name L1 and L2 and the numbers are just going to be the addresses corresponding to those labels so this could be 2 and this could be 4 right? now you can if this is a little too abstract you can think of a symbol table uh, like this uh, as a phone directory right? a phone directory gets assigned um, a phone directory lists names here and then it lists the phone numbers over here so it's the exact same concept if that helps you think about it. So to implement uh, symbol tables, um, there, there are many ways, uh, and the way the the way that we're gonna do it is with a hash table. So let me talk about what a hash table is. All right. So a hash table is a very elegant data structure that consists of an array. An array. Of a single, uh, of a fixed size, All right? So you may have um, one, two, three, four. This could be the size of the uh, of the hash table. Um, four. So you'll have index zero, one, two, and three. Now, the special thing about a hash table is that we combine that with what's called the uh, a hash function. So a hash function. Let's suppose that you want to store uh, strings in this uh, particular hash table um, or, or even better let's suppose that you want to store symbols in in this table and a symbol will be the name and it and the number that is assigned to it okay so a hash function will take the uh, the name of the symbol um, so let's suppose um, we want to insert a uh, symbol following symbol uh, ABC with an address of it doesn't matter maybe six 
right? It will take the name of that symbol, ABC, and it will assign a number, the hash value. Uh, now, the way that this assignment is done, the, the the mapping from a string to a number, there are many ways to do that, and uh, you know there's active research on how to do hash functions, how to create f hash functions for different things. Um, so let's just suppose, for the sake of argument, that uh, this particular uh, string gets assigned a five. The point is, a string gets assigned a number, and that number is not related to this address. It's, it's different. So after that, we're going to calculate the index where we should put this um, uh, uh, this element, this new symbol. Uh, and to do that, what we're going to do is the index is going to be equal to the hash value, so that's going to be 5, modulo the size of the uh, uh, the size of the hash table. So in that, in this case, it will be 4. And that way, we kind of uh, narrow down the uh, hash values to something that's between 0 and uh, the size of the table minus 1 because the modulo is guaranteed to return as something that's in range and in this case that will be 1 okay so that tells us that this element this node needs to get inserted at index 1 on in the hash table so I'm gonna bring it over here and I'm going to insert the whole thing ABC with an address of 6. Right now, if you have another element, let's say BCE with an address of 2, uh, you will do the same procedure. Right, You'll get the hash value first for BCE. and that will correspond to some number so let's say it's uh, uh, 2 and then you do the index as 2 modulo 4 and that will give you 2 and that tells you that you have to insert that element over here alright what's the advantage of this well the advantage is that when I want to search for an element in the hash table, what I'm gonna do, uh, no, let's say let's say that after inserting all this, I want to search for the symbol whose name is BCE. So I don't need to go through each and every cell of the array to check if the uh, if the element that I'm looking for is there. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to calculate the hash first. It will give me a number. Then I calculate the index where I expect to find it and that's 2. I go to that index and if, if there is something there uh, then that's where I'm gonna find the element and so I, I, I found it really fast without having to go through the entire array so that's uh, that's the elegance of hash uh, tables uh, they allow for a fast insertion and for a fast lookup but there are some problems associated with the hash table for example let's look at the first one Um, and really all the problems are related to this particular one. Let's suppose that we get another symbol and let's say that's uh, uh, D, E, F right and then uh, let's say that this um, the hash value that gets assigned to this is 9 so that means that we need to insert this element at uh, 9 Modulo four, and that's eight. Uh, sorry, that's uh, that's one. Right. So, do you see the problem? We we are assigning. We're we're gonna try to insert something that's already there. Uh, when this happens, uh, that's called a collision. So this is called a collision. And this is a. Uh, uh, a big problem with with hash tables because the hash functions are not guaranteed to uh, return a unique cell for each um, uh, for for each element, and in fact, um, 
anytime you have uh, you, you have an element space that's bigger than the hash table you're gonna have collisions because of the pigeonhole principle so those are uh, unavo unavoidable you know, in general um, so how do we solve this? There are many schemes designed to uh, solve this problem so the scheme that we're gonna be using in this assignment is called a hash table with chaining so in the hash table with chaining we're still going to have a fixed array and that will be of size 4 for now uh, and then when we want to insert an element uh, let's say ABC with an address of 6 instead of um, uh, you know we still find the hash and we still find the index so that would be 1 just like in the previous example but instead of inserting the element in there what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, have this array be a point uh, an array of pointers um, more specifically it's gonna be an array of heads to link lists so uh, initially all of them are gonna be null meaning uh, none of these entries point to a linked list so what I'm gonna do is when I need to insert something um, I'm going to insert it to a linked list corresponding to that entry so right now I'm, I'm looking at address 1 or a index 1 there's no linked list in there so my ABC node will be my first one so that will point to the head which will uh, this will be a linked list of um, uh, of, of symbols right or something that wraps a symbol in, in a structure that I can put in a linked list so it will look something like this ABC 6 okay now the same thing will happen when I try to insert the next one so BCE um, we'll go over here in its own linked list but now let's, uh, let's suppose we, we want to insert uh, DEF, the one that gave us a collision uh, DEF um, let's say address 5 so we're still find we're still gonna find that the index is one and then we're gonna go there and we're gonna add this to that linked list so to do that and there are many ways of doing that one is to go to the end of the linked list and add it there but the easier way is to and the way that you must use for this assignment is to make the the new node be the head of the uh, of the linked list so this moves uh, and then this gets inserted over here and then finally we link it like this so we're adding to the uh, front of the linked list uh, now this um, this means that let's say that we want to search for ABC so we're searching for ABC we still calculate the hash and we still calculate the index and that tells us that we expect to find it at index 1 but now we're not guaranteed uh, that that's gonna be the only element there we, we will have a linked list and then we'll have to have um, a loop that goes through the linked list searching for this element right so that's still better than it's still possibly better than having a loop that goes through uh, the the entire array because we've limited our search to a few elements so it's still better um, besides a good hash function um, should produce uh, very few collisions in other words it, it should uh, try to spread uh, elements throughout the hash table um, now in this in this assignment we give you uh, the hash function that you'll use for uh, uh, for symbols, it's in uh, symbol.c. So now I'm going to talk more about the uh, implementation details uh, for this assignment as, as they pertain to the hash table. Right. 